Next, we'll move forward with the approval of the September 11th uh, meeting minutes. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by Council Member Brown. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Council Member McBride. Any comments, questions, or edits to the minutes? I did want to ask Mr. Charnovich under old business where we are talking about the town legislative priorities document. If we could just clarify that um, the sentence budgetary asks from the state of Maryland government were also discussed, such as funding related to condo and homeowner association repair and rehabilitation period. And then the next <clears throat> the next sentence should be tenant rights related policies were also discussed and added to the priority list because it just the way it was written made them sound like the second thing was also budgetary and it was not thank you any other corrections to the minutes from the council all right hearing none i'll call for the vote all in favor let it be known by the saying of aye aye, aye. any nays the eyes have it thank you so much for tonight's meeting we do not have any appearances so we'll move forward uh, there's no old business for tonight's meeting so we'll advance to item number six with new business uh, moving over to the town count I'm sorry the town administrator for a presentation and feedback on council rules Um, the first item is looking at the issue of virtual and telephone participation in town, in town council meetings. Um, as we mentioned, during the pandemic, we had a emergency order that allowed us to meet virtually and telephonically. However, once that sort of expired, the council really doesn't have a set of rules that deal with this. What we did is that Mr. Charnovich put something out on um, MML and was able to get back some samples, which is what I've attached to the agenda item, which is several different examples of how other councils have handled this. Some have added just the words telephone and um, virtual in their, in their meeting. Others have made provisions for how, what, what type of um, circumstances that you would be able to attend virtually. So some kind of an emergency or things like that. So I wanted to be able to discuss this with council and so that you all have some time to kind of look at what other people are doing, how the town could approach it, and then provide staff with feedback so that we can work with the attorney um, on this matter. I put together a simple write-up, which had some just simple, let's say, if you just want to say telephone, virtual, for the four areas, the, four, the, the three areas that we were looking at is 210, roll call and attendance, 211, quorum, and 216 place of meeting and some ways you have the options to either say you know what we don't want to do this we'll just always make our stuff in person uh change the rules um in some ways like in some ways that we recommended just preliminarily or provide some alternatives that we can use for the overview but the first item i wanted to discuss was that and then i wanted to go into other items but if that helps from the of discussion for council was the first discussion was on this virtual and so I'm here for questions and to go through any materials that are here. Yeah, thank you for that overview. Uh, Town Administrator Bailey Hedgepath, are there any questions from the council? Not really, because I think, I, I think they were going to this somewhere else. Yes, I think I heard this was going on throughout the county, the virtual situation, so, but. I think it should have we, we, we don't know when we might get sick but we, we still want to be a part of the meeting so I wouldn't mind whether you're here or not if you could at least you could still be able to listen or it's the voting part I think I'm just picking up the voting part but I'm all for it either, either or thank thank you for that council member blunt um, I'll jump in with a few thoughts and then uh, turn it over to my colleagues. But one of the concerns I have is the language about joining telephonically. <coughs> we're here to serve the residents. And so if we're joining a virtual meeting, I don't think telephone connection is appropriate. The residents should be able to see you on camera. So if it's a state of emergency and we have to go virtual, I should not be walking around the house doing dishes. I should be you know, paying attention with my documentation 
engaged in the meeting. So I just don't, that, that's my concern with Title Phonically because it's not that we may not do the right thing, but we're changing these rules so those that come after us have these rules in place to do the job. Um, so that was a concern there. And, and this is referring to um, Section 2.10 on roll call and attendance. And then the other um, amend amendment too was just for revised language for C, striking telephonically from there. Also in 2.11, recommending we strike it from there. Um, and then I had a few other comments because the language provided, I think it was from La Plata, mm -hmm. where theirs was, I think, most appropriate because it touches on the concern I was sharing, which says um, any council member may participate in work and budget session meetings via any appropriate and available electronic means. And so again, striking telephone, but focusing on the means being video conference, provided that no more than one council member is exercising this, co this option at one meeting, and that no one council member of it, um, exercises this option for more than four times a year with the start date of the council member's term of office. I think this speaks to the, um, the changes, such as, let's say, council member Blunt has to be out of town for work, but she still wants to be able to connect to the meetings. Um, that would still give her the availability to do that while she's out of town. But I think also, again, just not thinking only about ourselves, but looking ahead, it makes sure that we're not abusing it if there's not a valid reason. So I'm not just not showing up and getting on the Zoom just because I don't want to be here. And so really, I think that language is something we should consider. Again, if the, the um, governor calls a state of emergency, that applies to everyone. But in other circumstances, I think that language is good because it just puts a buffer in there. And then, as you said, Council Member Blunt, I know there's been a lot of talk about this on the county level as well, but I'm a firm believer, and this is my stance with my staff at work. If you're sick, you're sick. And you should not be trying to join our meetings at work while you're out sick. Take care of yourself because your health is the most important thing. And I'm not a proponent of doing this so someone can be out sick and doing it. I feel like that's not fair to my colleagues. If you have COVID, some people suffer from long COVID and it takes them a while to get back up. I don't think that's fair to say, well, we have this option so you're expected to be on and, and be sick. And not only that, depending on the type of illness someone may have, you don't know what medications they're taking and if those medications take a toll on their ability to think, um, to make decisions on behalf of the town. So I just, I would get away from this being something for people being sick and really focusing on giving flexibility for extenuating circumstances when you cannot be here to perform your job and you just need to perform it be it uh, Zoom or Teams or whatever that mechanism is. So I wanted to just get your thoughts on there, because again, this is me just thinking through it, you know, reading the information from the other municipalities that was provided in the packet. Council Member Brown, I'll come over to you next, and then I'll go to Council Member McBride. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I am. Um, I, um, I pretty much um, think that the um, flexibility for extreme circumstances, because if you, know, if, if, if you are sick or not feeling well, it's not the expectation that we expect for, you know, for our council to, 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 you know, to have to try to, to present themselves you know, on camera or you know, participate. But I think uh, with there just being some type of, some, some flexibility and some language there, and, and like you said, in, in the extenuating circumstances. Absolutely. Thank you. Councilmember McBride, your thoughts? Um, I agree um, that there should be able to, uh, the council members should be able to just, you know, focus on getting better and not have to deal with the meeting. Um, and especially extenuating circumstances for where they're, they're located in their home or wherever. Um, yeah. I mean, I just think that we need that flexibility. Yeah. 
and town administrator on the um this is the second page of the mm -hmm. La Plata yeah. language is where they had that language under exceptional yeah. or extenuating circumstances. Town council meetings may convene virtually. So I think including that language saying, for example, in states of emergency by yes. the governor. That's what I would assess that yeah. I, I say that we would add that to just in general. Yeah. And the other thing there, the only reason why um, telephonically was something that was considered is because these, sometimes these technologies aren't as good as they can be. And if we have an issue where a member cannot, um, like they're, it just, it's not working and they can participate telephonically, then that's the reason why it was in there because of the fact that you, because they do have that dial in number. Mm -hmm. And so I think that if the council expectation is that you're on camera, I think that's a expectation that you sh can express. But if you do take out the availability of telephonically and someone has tried to get on and they can't and then they must call in then their their participation wouldn't be valid in that way so that's the reason why it was added so that you had that option but i think the council expectation as a norm that you should be on camera and that you should be present could be something that you could express but that's the only reason why is because that since they offer the telephone option and sometimes we have technical difficulties that we just wanted to offer that as a technical difficulty um, and that it would be that and because if, if you don't if you exclude it then that person has that and they, they won't be able to participate so is there a way we could just put that in the language to say the expectation is that you're on camera understanding if there's an extenuating circumstances and technology is not I will let I will let the I will let have um, let Suellen know that from our discussion to say that their preference is yeah. video but the fact that we just wanted to be able to have it and she might just say you may want to just have the word telephonically in there but I think that you would have as a council norm that that's not something that you would and then you can if you if you ran into a problem with it you could just change it to say if someone continues to use telephone yeah. and they're not doing that correctly but I think that's a that's the only reason why is because sometimes technology isn't great and Wi-Fi signals may not be great <laughs> <laughs> yes, fair point. Yeah. And then the other thing that I wanted to raise to the council and get your um, thoughts on was for closed sessions. Because of the nature of content typically discussed in closed sessions, my perspective is those should be restricted to in person. Because if I'm on this device, you have no idea if I have you on speaker. Um, you have no idea who's in the room with me. And if we're discussing a personnel matter, we owe it to our staff or the whoever is involved in that particular issue to maintain confidentiality. So I think addressing or clarifying, as long as the council agrees though for closed sessions, the, under, the expectation there is those have to be conducted in person because we do have to talk about sensitive things and we just can't run that risk. that's something that council would like to go forward with and we can make sure that's only so do you want this only to marry to apply to work sessions and regular sessions correct for the the first um, part of the conversation but for closed session the separate caveat for that would be um, to be the council agrees to meet in person to maintain the integrity of the conversation and confidentiality okay that, sorry would that be only for personnel or that's just for closed session in general? In general, because it could be legal, it could be something okay. sensitive. Okay. But you have it for emergencies, and in an emergency situation, you would then be able to do any meeting if you were in another state of emergency? Correct. Okay. Any other input before we move on? Okay. And then the next item is with respect to the agenda setting and just clarifying. And again, let me go back to what page was it? That's correct, Mayor. So the next one's an agenda setting. I believe that is section. Section two, mm -hmm. Article two, section is it? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I 
think it is section. Is it two point four as well? Special meetings, and then it's also in some place of the. Is that where it is in two point four? Trying to make sure I'm not. No, it's in a separate area. Number. Yeah, in the um, council rules, I was trying to find the exact section for um, setting the agenda. Okay, 6.1. 6 6.1. 6 okay. So I know in the past we've had different ways of doing it, and typically the mayor would work with the clerk and the administrator to draft the agenda. Um, council members can submit items, but there's been times where that process was not followed and we ended up with 20 different things on the agendas and meetings running long because as a legislative body, we were not focusing our meetings on legislative things. We were adding things to stack the agenda that didn't require the time needed in an actual council meeting for our body to deliberate on. And so I'd like the council support with getting back to having a process where the town clerk and town manager shall propose a, a prepared agenda to review with the mayor prior to the scheduled town council meeting. Also, council members can submit agenda items for consideration for the agenda, but ultimately the mayor is working with the administrator to fine tune that because some things may be time sensitive. So if I have a question about an event happening in February that I want on the agenda versus something that's more time um, constrained, time sensitive, or subject to a funding issue that we need to address. Now, I need to be able to work with the administrator to have flexibility to say, okay, council member, can we bump that to this meeting because these are priorities and this is what needs to be addressed immediately. It's worked well in the past and frankly, it, it wasn't until a couple of years ago where we started having issues with that. So I think just documenting it the way it is in section 4-2 in the um, La Plata document that you provided, it's on the, um, one, two, three, on the fourth page of, um, of that handout, but it just steps through that. And I think just detailing the process mm -hmm. is important. So if the mayor is not available, the mayor pro tem steps in, the mayor pro tem works with the administrator and the clerk to draft the agenda. And similar to how you share the items in your weekly memo, these are the things that you can expect to see on the upcoming agenda. Council members can still submit things for consideration, but somebody has to be the check, the, the final buck. And if the mayor is the CEO of the council, they should have the authority to dictate um, how we sh sort of prioritize ourselves and prioritize our time when we're convening as a legislative body. So I just wanted to get thoughts from the council on that. Because again, I'm coming at it from one perspective, but I'm open to other ideas. Okay. Council Member Blunt. Yeah, okay. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm understanding what you're saying, but just to be clear, if if we have a, a item to, to discuss, it would be up to you to decide whether it would, would I, I don't that I don't understand why would it be up to you because it might be important to me to be discussed and you might like we don't want to hear that or I'm we don't want to hear that this time we'll move it to this time I wouldn't think I would be being heard you know what I mean and I know we all are council members and I know you are the CEO you preside the meetings but we still should have a say so if that's important to us to be able to talk because that would be a strong mayor making the decision for everyone if I'm not mistaken I could be wrong but that would be a strong mayor type of um, government in which we're not. So I think if I have something to be said or have something on there, I think I should be, you know, my stuff should get there. Not to say that you're going to knock it down, I'm not saying that at all. But I don't think it should be done that way. But, again, we know it's a vote on that. So, but I don't think it should be that way because what's important to you may not be important to me. What's important to me might not be important to you, but at the same time, at least I know that I'm being heard. Yeah, that's great input. And the whole point is to make sure that we're using this time for legislating. That's what we're supposed to do. And so to make sure that the priorities are things that fall in line with that, and I understand the point very well, you, it may not be a legislative matter and someone wants it on the agenda as an update. And the question becomes, is this something worthy of pushing out in the council meeting, or is this an administrative update that we can push out to the community that doesn't require a vote or a council action? And so having the discretion to prioritize 
legislating, because that's what we're here to do, is important. I'll give you an example. I remember um, we had a meeting where it was stacked with a lot of things that were not legislative in nature, and we spent about 20 to 30 minutes talking about how 10 computers were going to be given out to the community. For a legislative body, that is a complete waste of time. When we come together and we have a quorum, we're here to make decisions on policies. We're here to really take action for the town. And so someone needs to be checking to make sure that's what we're doing. Otherwise, it could happen where we all have great ideas. We all stack the, um, the agenda with things that are not what we were elected to do, which was be legislators. There are little updates and things that can be shared in other ways. Yeah, and I understand that, but and that's why it would be good if we had quarterly meetings where we can talk about the things that you're saying is not legislators, but we'll be able to talk, but we don't have those meetings to right. be able to push out things that we would like to go on the agenda. So we just have this short time and we crunch it all up. We, have, we don't have time to even chew it. We just swallow it without, without any thinking. So, I, I mean, if we had our quarterly, I, I would agree with you, if we had quarterly meetings where we can discuss what our plan for the next three or six months that would not make it here. And I, I do understand that, but to make it, leave it up to one person and that's not, I mean, if that's what the child states or, or I would hate to want to talk about something, have never been heard, have never gotten a chance to be heard because you as the oversight, I mean, oversight of you know, the meetings, I'm, I'm learning that process as well, say no, it's not legislative, so we're not going to talk about it. I wouldn't think that would be fair. I appreciate it, and I'm sorry that you feel it's rushed and we don't have time to process it. Because I'll tell you, I spend hours preparing for the meetings, and I know everybody may not have that luxury, but this is important. And so I do take the time, but I do understand your point about the quarterly meetings. Councilmember Brown actually started those your previous time. Um, on the council and we can definitely if you're open to it go back to doing those on a quarterly basis if everyone's in agreement it, you know it was what Saturday morning at 10 o'clock we didn't take a lot of time but it was just as you said another opportunity so if everyone's open then we can consider doing that um, absolutely and then uh, town administrator Bailey Hedgepath I think the only other Thing was item C. I wasn't sure what you meant by other yeah, items any, there. Anything else? If there's anything else for the good of the order, which I would believe that may come up from um, from other from anything else. If there's anything that we that I missed, because if we were making changes, that we're going to have the attorney to make changes. I just wanted to leave it open for anyone. So any, that's other. Okay. Any other <laughs> areas that people will see identified where we need to make any updates? I'm not hearing anything else, so I think that's it for now. Okay. And then hopefully once we have a new um, council member sworn in for Ward 1 and council member <clears throat> Blunt re-sworn in for 2, then we can come back and maybe have a work session where we go through the whole rules Correct. and procedures. And that way we've got a full team and we can talk through all the areas right. and come up with um, some recommendations. So, and that's when that would be if we decide to change it that way, that's what you're speaking of now. So these are immediate changes because of the virtual comp component. That's what triggered um, the conversation recently. Mm -hmm. And so I brought up the agenda setting. And so before we move on, is there agreement um, with the agenda setting? Or do you agree with what um, Council Member Blunt was um, proposing? So just so Ms. Uh, Bailey Hedgepath has some direction from the council. With the agenda setting, I mean, I, um, I think I think as as long as if if there is is something that I want on the agenda, and it's and it's, well, we should just be putting legislative stuff on the agenda. <laughs> so, um, and I, Council I Member Brown, from your previous time on the council. Mm -hmm. My understanding is that's how it was done with Mr. Moss as well and the mayor at the time. And it wasn't that council members didn't have their things heard, but if it got to be where there was too much, some things had to be um, communicated that, I'm sorry, we need to bump this unless it's time sensitive. So there was communication. It wasn't just done in a right. vacuum. Right, right. And I think if, if that also the consideration being that if something has to be, because I don't think we've really had that, that 
problem, and I'm, I don't really foresee that us having that problem in the future, you know, but if it is too much and if, if there's something, then the consideration is to come to the council member and say, hey, look, this is, um, uh, can we, do you mind if we move this to the next one, or let's shift some things around, mm -hmm. move some things around. And I know in doing that before I've even had the council members say, well, I know I asked for 15 minutes, but I can do it in five because I just want to make sure we get to this on the next meeting. But that's what we do. We communicate with each other. So there will always be a conversation, to your point, council member Blunt, because we don't want to have a, um, an air that this isn't important and my, my idea is not heard. That's not what we're trying to do here. I understand that, but like you said, we start a meeting, I mean, mm -hmm. as you say, you get it together because we've been asking for a meeting forever and never gotten it. But if we do have a meeting prior to this, then we, everyone, is, is, everyone is heard and not just you saying, well, no, because you're the CEO or because we all still council member and it's not a strong mayor. Right, it's not a strong mayor. Right. 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 And yeah. don't get me wrong, this is not to at all insinuate that it's a strong mayor. But if you have someone who's the CEO of the council, that comes with a certain level of responsibility. And it's not that I'm trying to be above anyone else. I can swear if folks into office, council members cannot. So the reality is there are certain things the mayor can do that council members cannot, whether a strong mayor or not. And so being CEO of the council, having a voice in determining the priorities for the meetings is important. And that's why I'd ask for support, that we work together on this. But whether it's you being mayor, down the road. I would want the same thing for, well, it, but it could be, I'm just saying. And so to set it up so that you have that CEO of the council who's getting the ideas and saying, okay, we need to formulate this into a constructive and productive agenda. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, and I understand what you're saying, but yeah, I appreciate and, it. Thank and, you. And then the other thing, too, you know, as, as we do have our meetings, Corley, and we go through some things, I mean, we can go back and look at, hey, the, the forms of government and, you know, and when we have a new council member, you know, coming on board and all that stuff. So, um, but. Uh, and yeah. even with that, you know, getting into charter review, mm -hmm. which is what you're getting at, too, it is part of addressing the forms of government. And so maybe there's things that we're doing that we need to change. So I think all of that can be on the table. So um, I want to keep us moving because I know the um, review of agenda items is going to take some time, but want to next move into the ARPA update and presentation. Sure. Thank you, Mayor and Council. So the ARPA, th that, that direction is really helpful. What I can do is bring back some stuff, and I think if you would prefer for me to bring it back um, as a, another agenda, I mean, as another work session, we can, but I think there's some stuff that we can make some real headway on. Okay, so on the ARPA update and recommendations of 2024, um, staff has been, I, I've got a I've got a quick um, PowerPoint, which I think will help to kind of outline this, but what I've attached are where we are so far in our spending, which I think is might be helpful to the council from the standpoint that um, we've spent, um, which is gives, which gives us, it gives you kind of a thing where we are. So right now um, we spent 1.9, we have a, a fund balance of 1.965703 in ARPA funds, and I believe, Vito, this was as of the 28th of September. I think you even gave me a, a more updated one, but we're not that far off. So we have a little bit less than $2 million left um, in ARPA funds. Some of that is always going is um, going towards compensation, which are part of the um, police um, compensation. So those, are, those items are going to be spent throughout the year. Um, but the community assistance program is what I'd really like to talk about. So, um, what we have here is um, so to kind of just go through it because I have my in in your packet there are some um, there are some slides just, just so that you can see them just in case that the online doesn't work. Um, there's a current spending. So what I'm going to start with is the current spending update. There's some proposed changes to the rental and mortgage, um, some changes to the utility program, and changes to the food assistance and business program. So on that main page, what I'm showing you, um, the first page that just gives you the update. Um, it'll show you, we're, we're on slide three, Rich, so that way everybody can see the same slide. Thank you. Okay. So neatly. Yes. There you go. Okay. So on slide, so on this third slide here, we have um, where the rental and mortgage assistance is um, currently. Is that going out? 
It's going here locally. I'll sign but it's not there. Zoom. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just read what's on the. I'll read on there what's on here so that everybody can see what I'm talking about. But our FY25 budget for rental and mortgage assistance is 500,000. To date, we spent $220,386. We have a remaining balance of $279,614. Uh, um, in the business program, we reduced that from $500,000 to two hundred fifty dollars because we had only spent $6,000 this year. We are on track. We're still at $244,000 left in that fund. With food assistance, we have $20,000, and that's, that usually goes to the Thanksgiving program that we run. Um, so that's, that's what that $20,000 is for. And then for um, monitoring, which is the, um, the, cell, the, uh, the ring camera program, that's $50,000. And right now, we've paid out $891. Uh, so that's two, it was two, I believe one was like 500 and one was about $391. Um, so um, the, I'll go to the first slide, Rich. It's the um, community assistance slide, which is the rental and mortgage um, slide. Currently, the practice seems to work well. We have a limited amount of funds left. And the interesting part is that we believe that it should be continue on this first come, first serve basis. But we've had some applicants repeat and if we continue to do it the same way we've done it, we are um, we usually give between um, about around four thousand dollars. But we've had occasions where we we've, we've been asked for an award of more than seventeen to eighteen thousand dollars in past rents. Um, we would like to set a ceiling up where we would do the average for everyone that came in because I believe that that would make it faster for staff and it also allow us to not run out of funds before March. Because as you can see right now, in the first three months, we spent half of our money. We will spend the other half probably by March 31st. So that's where I'm estimating where you're going to probably have the, and what you can do is if we don't exceed the funds by March 31st, it's until it's done, but we will exceed the, we'll, we will expend the funds before that time. The second one is the utilities assistance program. Um, that is also part of the rental and mortgage. We do not actually have a separate line item veto from what, the way that I understand it. Um, we're suggesting that we, we've, our average award has been about $1,000. We are suggesting a maximum of $2,500 for this program because oftentimes with the rental assistance, a lot of the apartment communities in the area include utilities as part of their rental. So we're not getting that as often because of the fact that so many of the people that are asking for rental are getting it as far as the rental and utility, if that makes sense. Um, the next slide is in regards to the food program. We were suggesting that you augment this program because you have the once a year with the turkeys. If you would do something additionally, you could do that. I think Councilwoman Blunt had mentioned something about that, and she had sent an email about from the, from the government shutdown, and I probably believe that that might occur later in the year, and you may want to be able to move some money around for that. The last one is in regards to the business assistance program. Again, we're showing that we'd like to be able to close this out earlier because what we are asking is to close these out in March so that we can then come to you as part of the budget process and do a reappropriation for the new fiscal year. So the overall concept that I'd like to kind of just make sure that we, huh? We're on the last slide. Okay. I went through it. Okay. <laughs> I know the mayor's on me to keep yeah. this uh, keep this You're going. You're a quick reader, Michelle. Right. You know. um, so the um, so the, the the what the bottom line is is that where I'd like to be able to do is see us to you know kind of give you an update in March, tell you where we are, so that we have to expend all these funds by December of 2024. Mm -hmm. My understanding is right, Vito. Um, so that we'd like to be able to then come up with a plan for your, your fiscal year 25. So if we're going to do some cap, we're going to buy capital projects or things like that, that you can use these funds for that. Um, as I, that's the reason why, again, that, that main slide that you had, you can see that you've given over, uh, you'll given away um, already about 1.8 million in funds. Um, in regards to ARPA to the community, and a large majority of that has been in rental assistance um, and over the last few years. So I just wanted to give you that update so you knew where we are. Um, we've been making some changes in um, trying to make this, trying to expedite payments out so that, they're, so, so that people are getting that, and we're still just trying to make sure that we get these out to people in need as soon as they can, because we are getting a lot of people that are, um, are being evicted and we are getting evictions, so we're trying to work on those faster so that we can forestall the evictions. 
And I'm here for any questions you may have. Thank you, Town Administrator. Town Administrator. So, one of the questions I have for the council in looking at the recommendations here was to see how you all felt about the ceiling of what we would pay. Um, because early on when we started this process, there were people who were almost a year behind due to losing jobs and so forth. And as was stated, now we're getting a lot of people coming back trying to push us to give it to them again, which we're not going to do. And I appreciated you when we were talking about this, Councilmember Blunt, saying it should be a one-time thing because you don't want a situation where people are just taking advantage. This is truly for an extenuating circumstance. And so I, I don't know. I feel torn because when I look at the rents in our community, $4,000, if I live at Autumn Woods and I'm paying $1,800, and due to COVID, because I'm in retail, sales haven't picked up and I lose my job and I get three months behind, this is not going to, to cover it for me. Well, then the thing that uh, anecdotally or what's actually happening is that we are getting these at two months now mm -hmm. from the rental companies. They are sending them to us because they now can do the eviction process. So it's actually a different case than it was. So like we've gotten rid of, let's say, the backlogs of people that had that were there for a year and ha and really were the, pre the the real COVID ones. Those are actually all gone. Okay. Now the ones we're getting are people that are a month or two behind, and they're they're sending them to us right away because they'd like to send them to evictions very so quickly. So then we are getting them a lot quicker than we were um, because this this uh, this is out there. Um, so that's that is the. That is the, I mean, I, I don't think we've had, I'm just trying to remember the, the most, I'm, I, the ones I just looked at recently, Vito, were, were really no more than 4,000, 5,000. And apiece. we're seeing them start to come in with a lot less now, going like a month in arrears mm -hmm. or two months in yeah. arrears versus, you know, the ones that were several. The 10, several 11, years. 12. Yeah. 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 Not saying, it, you know, it's, we still get them, but yeah. they're but they're not but they're not as not as prevalent. Okay, Councilmember Blunt, you got a comment? Question. Okay, we haven't paid double for someone yet no. at, mm -hmm. at this point. So, you wouldn't cons consider hardship. I guess that'd be a lot of work. Of someone who may be still facing that. No, that's a lot of social working with that. And that's the oh, issue. That's and there's one person that comes to mind where we've gone and tried to help this particular resident talk to management on their behalf. Management offered a solution. The resident doesn't want to take it. And so after we've helped them, this particular resident has received ERAP three times. And then again, recently this summer, got another wave of payment and is still behind. That's my worry. Those are the situations that we're going to get. And when we're trying to help and give advice, that may be difficult to deliver, but just because we're trying to help, to say these are your options and you've got to do this so your family's not on the street. If people aren't taking them and they're just looking for a paycheck, that's that's my concern. And I, I mean, frankly, if I was in that position, I would think, obviously I don't know, but if that happened once, I'd be doing whatever I had to do not to be in that situation. So if I have to go from a two bedroom to an efficiency with me and my children or stay with a relative for six months and save, there, you know, sometimes you have to do what you don't want to do to get to what you want to do. And I wouldn't want to put ourselves in a position where these funds that were a one time, you know, opportunity are going to those situations. Um, exactly, because there's a pattern. Yes. Where are you going to get the money from the next time? Exactly. I've been in that situation where um, I had to go get assistance back when I was living, where I was living. So, I, yeah. yeah. And that's my concern, too. I mean, again, in, with the same family, you're talking about five different times that they've been dug out. Mm -hmm. And those would be the ones most likely, you know, to. A, yeah. Mike wasn't on. Um, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, so, you made um, some good points. You want to <laughs> state them? Well, no, but no, I, I, it'd be more, we'll become social workers then and, and financial advisors right. and stuff like that. So, yeah, no, no. I don't. Now, how, do you, how does everyone feel about maybe setting the ceiling at 5000 Would that be okay? Just because, again, we're only in the first quarter. We've uh, already spent almost half of what we allocated. So just to kind of put, why, 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 why 
do we have to put a ceiling on it at all well, at this point? Because if, if um, I mean, the funds have to all be spent by uh, 2024. 20, um, and then if it needs to, if we need to provide assistance to someone and it's over 5,000, then they have to come back to the table again. Mm -hmm. And you know, more than likely, I'm sure we would, we would approve it. Mm -hmm. So why is there a ceiling there at all? This is just not, unless it's something that comes in that that is just so outrageous. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And then there's well, discussion behind it. So there is a, we do have a ceiling for my authority at 999. And so I have not written a check over $10,000 because of that. Mm -hmm. If you would like to remain that the, the $10,000 ceiling is there, I believe that would be, or if the council would like to give me discretion to pay above that, we never got that discretion. So I would like to, if that, if the, from the standpoint of council, if that's a desire, if there is a discretion that whatever comes in that you're authorizing me to pay, I'd like, if you wanna make that, that recommendation, that also can be a recommendation. We're suggesting the the four thousand because that is the average amount, mm -hmm. and it also helps us from when we're trying to process so that we know like what's going, so that we can come up with an amount. But that's five thousand, whatever your amount is, or whatever the the council was. But I just want to let you know that there is a, I had I did have to develop a ceiling because I don't have the ability to sign off on more than the ten thousand dollars. But if council wants to authorize that as part of this, we can. You can. That's I just didn't. I just never had that permission. I think five thousand is good. Yeah, or we can leave it as is up to the 9999. Yeah. Nine. And mm -hmm. if there's an extenuating circumstance, we can consider it. Yeah, I can it. always come back and bring it to you. That's the yeah. I mean, that's yeah. how I could do it. But I, I, yeah. have, I have not brought those back because usually with people, they have been happy to get the 9999. And, yeah. and, <laughs> been, yeah. and that has worked. Yeah. Okay, so that's the answer for that. I'm looking at the time, and we mm -hmm. still have a lot to get through. So then on the um, other question that you had about. Um, the utility assistance and creating a funding ceiling for that it doesn't really seem like we need to take any action there we no. can proceed as is because there's very few very few applicants. Anyways, yeah it's just those are just all the ceilings that if we ever had these again it's just i think that's what we were looking for but we're, you don't need to do that i just more of the fact we want to know you want you to know where we were and this is where we are okay council member oh, the, the food i know we have the twenty thousand for the food mm -hmm. um however we do a lot for thanksgiving um, for the community, but it's not enough done at Christmas, and unfortunately, the same yeah. need um, Christmas. I mean, the resources are wiped out at Thanksgiving, and it's none for Christmas. So maybe we can, um, other than what we get from the police department, mm -hmm. if we can consider maybe something for Christmas. I'm, yeah, I, mean, I would love that. I know I had brought it up before. VGC wanted to do something for Christmas as well, mm -hmm. but at the time the council said no, so we didn't push for it. But if everyone's open, it's a, it's yeah. I think you're right. There's a significant it's, it's, it's need, need at Christmas. That because, would be a yes. huge blessing to oh, the gosh, community. Yeah, so yes, we'll add be. in Christmas. Um, would you give do you want to do it for the same amount or 30? I would or say the same amount. Yeah. I know that we have been talking to VGC just as a, mm -hmm. and I believe that we might, you may, that the um, the cost of turkeys has exceeded this year. Yeah. So I was thinking yeah. that you may want to then just give a round of a 50, you know, like an additional 30, because that would give you 25 for Thanksgiving, 25 for Christmas, because I think the number of turkeys you did last year was 18. And she was saying that they've gone up about 20 to 30 percent. Yeah, and even last year they had doubled from yeah. the previous time. So from ten dollars with the quantity discount yeah. to more like 18. So, so uh, that, if, does that sound all right with so everybody? That, yes. So that allocating fifty thousand dollars, if yes. the council could move to allocate fifty thousand dollars for food, and we would then move that from one of the ones that are not being used, probably mm -hmm. from business, if that would make yeah, the sense. Yeah, that works. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the last thing was the business assistance program. Um, I mean, we're, we're going out there, we're giving out more stuff. I think the issue is that we're, what, what we want to do is that we will continue to work with our economic development advisor and make some contacts with the business um, community with him and try to do that and try to make sure that that is more well known. I think we just got one today for the $3,000 and just letting people know that you don't have to be in financial straits necessarily for it, that they may just need the assistance just because it might help them. And we're, we're gonna let people know that. So we'll let you know how that goes and we'll let you know where money is. 
Sounds good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, and so then the next item on the agenda, I believe, is the Fort Town CDC, CDC update. Yeah. Yes. It's very. It's this is quick. Um, we met with the Port Towns. We had a meeting um, that was on the 18th. They went through the Port Town sector plan um, and some of the sustainability, um, the sustainable community designation, and then two person train crews. And then there was also a discussion on the Port Town CDC. Um, and so that's the, the second slide or is about the fact that the topic was discussed. It was raised by Denise Hamler and former board member um, Diana Gillespie. Um, the discussion centered around whether or not to, re to revive the current, to, whether or not, sorry, whether or not to revive the current organization or create a new structure. Um, some of the participants wanted to explore starting a new organization. Basically, I just want to talk to the council from the standpoint of where are you all? And then um, in a closed session, we will talk about if you um, about representation if you decide that. Yeah, thank you for the recap. And then as an update, so for the public, one of our challenges with the CDC is we have been trying to get involved or in touch with um, in a meeting with the previous executive director, Chris Melendez. Um, in the Port Towns quarterly meeting two weeks ago, we learned she moved out of town. And so the uh, ladies, Ms. Hamler and Ms. Willespie, we're just trying to um, say, look, okay, we'll give you until the end of September, but we really need the opportunity to talk to you because we're missing out on funding opportunities for the Port Towns and really need to reinvigorate that organization. Um, again, they gave her until September 30th. The update I have is over the course of the weekend, Ms. Hamler reached out and let me know that Chris Melendez had returned the financial books to her, the keys to the office and so forth. So that information is now in possession of those former board members. They've agreed to look through it, but still think that we need to have a conversation about how we want to move forward just based on the discussion at the CDC. But I just wanted to communicate that to the public that we have been trying to contact them, meet with them and restart communication for several years now. Um, so we did our best, but it's taken a while. We're here now and looking forward to getting that back on the right track. So thank you for that update. Um, the Wait, next, oh, sorry, um, Council Member Brown. Yes. So, and um, I just want, I just, just want to say in terms of, uh, I just recommend that, um, that we start fresh because, um, because as as we can you know try to figure out what's going on it but simultaneously you're starting fresh because as i had um, mentioned during that meeting that we're missing out missing out more on money on monies that you know we that, that could be redirected to this to our cdc but um i i just i just think that we should have just move forward you know sooner sooner than later because we we've, we've been talking about it been having the meetings and and as we're trying to to because I know some of that funding is intertwined with B, with B5 and right. yeah and then a lot of unraveling needs to be done there but start fresh and then with a new new board some new people some people who can get some things done and um, so I, I definitely hope that the the the, the will for uh, of it would will be for us to to do to start a, a new um, CDC Thank you for that, Council Member Brown. Any other comments or questions on the CDC? No, I was Blunt? at that meeting, I agree. You yeah. start fresh, and that way you don't have to go back and unravel all of that. It's just everybody starting fresh. I agree. Agree, because one of my concerns is because of money from the B5 being in those accounts. You know, if we take yeah. that over, how are we really to know, well, what is their money versus what was CDC money and having to get intertwined and that could be a little messy. Mm -hmm. So I think you're right. It may make sense to just start fresh, maybe down the road, once they have all that cleaned up, then maybe they can be absorbed in at some point, uh, the old organization or as a subsidiary of this new entity. But yeah, I agree right now, the way that it was discussed, it's not in our best interest. Yeah, yeah, because I don't know how we became, and well, the CDC became the fiduciary for the, the B5, B5 anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. but yeah. Agree. Thank you Thank for you. raising those points. Mm -hmm. um, and so, getting back to. So, so Mayor and Council, yes. so the direction I'm getting is that move forward with the other towns mm -hmm. to look into either to, to establishing a new 
uh, CDC, and which we will do, and I'll bring back a report to you. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. And then we're coming back to you, Madam Town Administrator, for the items um, Overview. for review. Yep, yes, sure. So um, we have a, got a quick PowerPoint, which I think makes it pretty easy. So um, the first... The I'm sorry, uh, just one, one point. Mr. Tonelli, I just want you to know your title for PowerPoints has been taken by the town administrator. <laughs> yeah. the only first you, meeting she's doing. I took it for I took it from Vito. I think it's easier. So all right. So then so just to let you know is that so there's some key items of interest is that we've got ordinance uh, three dash twenty twenty four, a budget amendment. This is a request to uh, and then you can go to the first one, Vito. The first one is the request to go to um, to allow the town to move some um, to move funding from speed cameras to pay for some capital items, which would include an amount not to exceed for furnishings and another one for contract for contractual services. This will allow us to um, the the town. We have been working on the offices for the police department. Uh, we had a we had a pipe break a couple months ago, and a lot of the furniture and other things were not in great condition. And we're further, um, they're further made not great. So um, we have been, we've done some work over there. It's been painted. They've got new flooring. It's looking really good. So they can actually use it for the next couple of years. And it will be, it's really worth the actual the money right now. And then $30,000 will also be used to hire a, a grant consultant that will work specifically with the police department. Um, and that will help to augment that as part of their baseline budget. Um, the next item is a contract approval, dash four, 2024. This will allow the town administrator to execute a, a contract with the municipal grant services for on call grant services and project management for annexation. Um, we had a conversation with Mr. John O'Connor with, um, with municipal grant services. He is, he applied for our grant management um, stuff uh, and he's going to be working with the police department directly on theirs. Um, he's been very successful. There's an, there's a about 100 pages in your packet in regards to grants that he's obtained from other entities. And he also has experience working as a project manager on annexation and, and working with the businesses and doing the before stuff that we would do with both the getting the meets and bounds with the engineer and is, and is going to work as a project manager on that as a separate uh, scope. So we will bring back, I will get a contract from um, from Ms. Um, Ms. Ms. Ferguson in regards to this to have both those scopes in there. The next item is contract approval 5-24, I mean 2024. This will allow me to execute a contract to join the Time to Care Insurance Act. Um, Time to Care is a law that was passed by the state of Maryland that gave enhanced benefits to actually every employee in the state of Maryland to be able to take off to care for a loved one. Um, so it's, it's sort of an enhanced um, unemployment um, system. and. It actually comes into fruition in 2026, but you have to start paying in in 2024-25. The MML has a, a, a collaborative group, which is going to be um, helping all the municipalities so that we can have our insurance fund. That is um, put together from with, um, with using some of the um, actuarials um, people from, um, what's, I forgot the firm's name, but it's a big actuarial firm that is going to do this. What the town would do is, because we're a small municipality, is pay $3,000 to join it. It's a lot cheaper than us self-insuring because if we had to um, pay those benefits um, up and above, it would cost us a lot more than the insurance cost. So the next one is um, uh, approval of 6-2024. It's for me to renew the SALT agreement with SHA. I actually did get back this agreement from the attorney today, one of the only few agreements she's gotten back to me. <laughs> she is ready, and it's ready to sign um, so that we can have extra SALT with SHA. And if you can, if, you, if the council approves it, we will be on for SHA. Um, the last one is contract 7-2024. It is allowing us to enter into a MOU with the city of Hyattsville. We've done this every year. It's a backup to a backup with the city of Hyattsville for salt services. And it allows us to buy salt from city of Hyattsville at a greatly um, outrageous price. But if we ever ran out, we have them as a backup. <laughs> and so there's your, that's your agenda meeting for tonight. Um, from all the town items. Great, thank you. So right. um, with the time that we have, just a few questions. So I mm -hmm. wanna just clarify. So the funds that are currently 
Banks bet on the rental of the temporary trailer yes. for um, the chief of police. That is that is the funding, the 30K, that would go toward Correct. the contractor. The contractor, because what we are doing is we're getting rid of the that, and we're also getting rid of our storage unit, which is uh, we're finally getting rid of all the furniture that's older that's in there. So what we will do is eliminate both those costs, and that is actually the same cost that we are spending on that. So that's the reason why we're doing the uh, transfer for this year, because there's some lag time but it'll also allow us to pay some of the fees for annexation if we need them. Okay, thank you for that. And then with respect to the municipal grant services, mm -hmm. so we already have an economic, oh, sorry. sorry. Mm -hmm. Can we go back to Oh, yeah, one? sorry. Mm -hmm. go ahead. I was jumping, go ahead. I was going down the list. Go ahead, go ahead, Council Member Brown. Brown. Thank you. Um, so, um, a couple of questions sure. for the uh, the contractual SBA because I um, looked at the grants and everything. I think he's that uh, I must tell Connor that would be a definite uh, contributory to the um, to the police department. But I, I, was, I guess the question is with the thirty thousand dollars, like what's the pay structure kind of? It's and a, then does it, it? Yeah, sure, I can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so it's thirty thousand. So the thirty thousand dollars, it's three thousand dollars a month as a retainer for them. Oh, okay. They do not do an on-call hourly like our other grant um, mm -hmm. service is. Um, and what that also includes from Mr. O'Connor is the fact that he also um, does some of the reporting from the police department because he is also, he was a police, a police officer, so he would be taking on some of those duties as well. Mm -hmm. um, but the annexation service is a separate amount that would have to be paid hourly if we did want to en enact that with them. So. Okay, and then so that's uh, the retainer, mm -hmm. the three thousand dollars a month, and um, so he administers a grant because I, I I actually read mm -hmm. where 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 it once the grant is awarded. Stats. I know it's an ad. Oh I don't gosh. know why there's once like the, the grants are awarded uh, or uh, are awarded, they 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 his company they will help administer the, right. the grants as well. So how does that pay structure work? Is there is there an administrative administrative fee that's no, within that grant? No, it's just three thousand dollars a month. So so he gets paid three thousand dollars a month regardless to whether. That's the reason we why I'd only like to enter grants. into a one year agreement to make okay. sure that we are not like so. If we got nothing out of it, we mm -hmm. would have spent thirty thousand dollars. I don't believe that will be the case mm -hmm. with Mr. Mm -hmm. with Mr. O'Connor, but. The reason why I would like to enter into a one year with a renewal for a second year mm -hmm. is to, to make sure that we are be, we if we do not get anything out of it that I can walk mm -hmm. that we can walk away from it. And then if we do, if we get something out of it, is it still just a three thousand dollar retainer, or is the expectation that it, so say for instance he mm -hmm. uh, helps us, help us get a grant for one hundred and fifty thousand dollars? Right. Is there an ex, is there any no? It's a flat monthly fee. It's a flat monthly fee. It's not gonna yeah, so it is a flat monthly fee regardless if he gets you $50, if he gets you $500,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you are taking a chance. Um, with the other ones, it's the fact that the other contract we have is an hourly contract mm -hmm. for the grant writing services. Mm -hmm. And that's what, so that the difference is the, the way that with um, Monarch Butterfly, there's our, they, they're charging us per hour to write them. I mean, mm -hmm. actually both of them... Wow. Or could be actually the same. They charge ninety dollars an hour to write the, for the. That was part of their contract scope. So and then and, and we'll we'll talk about that. But we're monitoring, kind of monitoring that to make sure that. Yeah, you know, we are, of course. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> right. Of course we do. Yeah, of course. That's not. I only send it when I need when I'm ready to when I'm ready to execute. They're not. We're not just billing ninety dollars an hour for saying hi. No, that's not. And then with respect to the project management for annexation services, mm -hmm. so we have our economic development consultant mm -hmm. who's helping us put our strategy together Correct. and move forward with that. <clears throat> so my concern here is if this person comes in thinking they're the project manager for annexation, we're going to have conflict because one person's doing one thing and he's doing something different. I can, yeah, Mayor, um, what, uh, and let me say that's why, um, so the jobs are actually going to be kind of, uh, will be very different from the standpoint that there is a um, certain amount of materials um, that you have to put together, and especially in regards to police coverage, which is something that, um, so we, if the, the title, that's the reason why it's a working title, but project management on the standpoint of um, being able to provide um, some of the ROI for the um, for the businesses in regards to police services and in regards to why the annexation amounts are. But I agree with you that Mr. Um, with um, High Street, we are looking at the 
focus of where we'd like to develop, I mean, where, where we'd like to annex, and the ROI as well. So I will not be playing duplicate services from one to the other. I'm not going to go to both of them and tell me what's the ROI. I will go to one and say what's the ROI for police that we need to have in those documents. And then with, with, with High Street, we would talk about what is the ROI for the businesses from the standpoint of their growth of businesses and what we can offer to that. So they will have two separate scopes. And then just in terms of the process, though, because we need ultimately one project manager overall, just making sure it's getting done. So would that be High Street's? I would position. still say it's probably the town. We would be, I, I, I probably, okay. I'm, I, I am their senior project manager of the project managers. Okay. So they, they like the title project manager, but ultimately we are the, the project managers of this. There's, yeah, because the, the I town just is. worry getting out yes. there ahead of us. No. Um, so, okay. I agree. Uh, any other questions from the council on the items for the agenda? Okay. I think that is everything. The Time to Care Act, mm -hmm. I think just um, just getting a little bit more information on that from a budget standpoint in terms of... We won't know that until we actually enter into the collaborative mm -hmm. because that's what, um, gosh, I'm trying to remember the actuarial firm that's doing it. They will then use our actual, once we sign up, we will get that and then we can be able to pull out of it if we believe it's too much. So they will actually do what the $3,000 is, it starts the actuarial process with, Hag it's not Haggerty, it's, um, gosh, I forgot the firm. You know, it's the one that does all of the actuarial studies yeah, for I forget what it is. Bolton, it's, Bolton. Oh, it's through MABE. If it's yeah. through MABE. Yeah. So not only is, the, is MML doing it, the counties are doing it as well. But Bolton will provide actuarial estimates for each one of us based oh, on our size. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're paying for is for them to do that as, as part of the collaborative. Oh, so okay. we will get you part of your budget mm -hmm. next year will include how much to put away for this. And that's what we need to be able to enter into. This was so MML rushed this issue for us because it's been an emerging issue. Um, that's been on the thing and they wanted we if we don't enter in now we won't be able to enter into the collaborative until when we won't be able to enter into the collaborative that's what they're basically telling us is that you that they may not allow us to enter in if we do not sign up in, as part of the initial phase because they need to know who's going to be in it who's going to be out I'm hoping they'll say if we if you decide not to do this that six months from now you might be able to do it but we were sort of told that we needed to get this on the agenda they told us in the beginning of September, at, right after you had your meeting, that they wanted us to be on here. And I said, I cannot get, get authorization until I introduce this concept to you at the meeting. So they're holding it for me to be, in, to, to be, to be a member for now. So, I mean, if there's a decision that the council does not want to um, join the collaborative, we can tell them no, because we can pull out still. That's, what, that's the reason why this is written, written this way, so that you can pull out right now, but we may not get a chance to rejoin for several, maybe for until, until after the first year. That's what they're telling us right now. Which makes sense because they're trying to push to have more municipalities in there so exactly. they can get a more favorable actual Exactly. Study. That's what that, that's exactly. But the other part of it too is I'm hoping, I mean, we can't predict the future, but that they're just saying this now. Right. And then, then they'll invite everybody after, in. Yeah, right. after two years, it's more like open enrollment where yeah. it's once a year. That's what I'm hoping that's in. what that is. But I'm, the reason why I wanted to bring it to you in this expedited manner was because that's, that's what they're, they've told us. And they literally sent this to me on the 13th right after you had your meeting so I couldn't bring it to you before then and then this is the only time that we could bring it so I they're holding okay. it for us right now so that's I mean if you decide no that's that's your choice but it's just to make sure that we have it we haven't written a check we you know we do and when I did say this meeting is where we are I mean actually that's that's good sorry Councilman I'm sorry I, mm -hmm. I, I, I do like it because mm -hmm. you have to think if we have a loved one I mean I guess you don't want to get married mm -hmm. but and you had to take off and right. to take you still, you know, still have an income for your home. I mean, I love that. I wish they had that for seniors, but no, that's that's beautiful. It's a thousand dollars. It's like it's, a, it's up to a thousand dollars a week. No, I'm just saying. No, yeah, it, it does make a difference, yeah, particularly a difference. if you have yeah, a, a loved one, a loved one dealing with a long-term <sighs> illness. Yes. And then the other two questions were just going back to the SOT contract. So. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what the cost is for the state highway oh, agreement? And I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> for Hyattsville? Hyattsville, I know, um, Mr. Uh, I, they didn't send me what Hyattsville was, and right. that's, we've never, well, it's, it's. Well, um, <clears throat> yeah. Hyattsville, you know, as we as a town think, we partnership with people. 
But Highsville is basically higher than what we already get because they're going to charge you for the salt. They're going to charge you for the operator to load your salt in. Mm -hmm. And the bad thing about it is we can only get how much they're going to give us. Right. So the Hyattsville agreement was... But we still... Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. So, yeah, no, the Hyattsville agreement is really in place. It's if a backup. It's yes. a backup mm -hmm. of a backup. The, the state, I know, has a reasonable, a much more reasonable rate, but it's still that we are, we already have a salt budget and we've already purchased salt. These are both if we, if there's a snowmageddon and we need to go to the state and pick up at the state lot and we don't pay a higher rate for that. Um, I don't have their the things, but I can provide that to the council, um, their newest rates, because they didn't provide, I think it's not in, I don't see I it in the actual agreement. That's 85, 85, 85 so 23. 23. Yeah, that's a time. Time. Like yeah. That. I was like, that's what I thought it was said something like that, so is it. Um, but, so is that a reasonable price? Yeah, well, that yeah, seems it's, like it's, a it's, it's in the same ballpark. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, okay. it's what we, it's, it's, it's usually what we play, that's why I was thinking it's not okay. too high. But the, I know that I know that Hyattsville is probably in the, the 95 to 100 dollar the ton range. That's what I would say. Yeah, you're paying for the convenience and yes. you know, the access in an emergency. Well, I mean, <clears throat> I can say you're paying for the convenience, but the convenience to us is if we come to get boat, then we we need more than one truck hopper full. Right here. Yeah. So you can cut us off in the middle of a storm and say we don't have enough for the rest of the municipalities. Right. So. But that's just, a, as Ms. Michelle said, that's just a backup. You know, we always, it's good to have, you know, a couple of backups during, you know, inclement weather. Yeah. Whatever you get. Your and we've had years where we've had that. I mean, I've had a year where we had that in like 20, it's like 2012 or 13, I had something like that where I needed to use SHA when I was in Capitol Heights and I had my own salt and I had to use SHA and then I had one with the county. So okay. that's not, it's not, it's not abnormal to have a backup of a backup. Okay. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> So with that, we have come to the end of the agenda for, nice, for tonight's work session. May I have a motion to adjourn? Absolutely. Moved by Council Member Blunt. Is there a second? A second. Seconded by Council Member McBride. Any comments, questions? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, let it be known by the saying of aye. 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 Any nays? We're adjourned. We'll see you back at 7. <laughs>